Hey, thanks for checking out this video. My name is Joseph with Gerber Design. Today we're going to be making a red oak coffee table with storage and a lift top. The first section of this video is going to be milling up the eight quarter red oak for two sets of legs. I have to face join, edge join, and then send it through the planer because all the material I'm using here is rough. I have a couple sets of these eight quarter pieces. One's at 16 inches, which will be for the legs that I'm cutting right here at two inches wide. Then I have another set that are 25 inches long. That will be the cross pieces that will attach each leg. And I'm going to rip those down to one and a half inches. Once I have all of my pieces ripped to the widths that I need, I'm going to take them over to my miter gauge, rip one edge on all of the pieces. So that's my clean side then butt that side up to the stop on my miter gauge and that will get me all four pieces at 16 inches for the legs and then I will move my stop do the same thing and get all of my cross pieces cut to 24 inches. I'm using the Harvey MG36 miter gauge but I do have a video of me building a crosscut sled with adjustable stops so I'll link that here you can check that out having adjustable stops is amazing when making repeated cuts you can see here I made this little spacer so that way I get all of my pieces evenly spaced on both sets of legs. Make sure you label everything so you don't lose any pieces and you know where everything goes every time. Whenever I'm making two of something I always tend to mix things up so having unique number combinations really helps. I'm using the Festool Domino for all of my joinery but if you don't have a domino a dowel jig will work just as well. I have a video comparing the dowel jig that I like to use with the Festool Domino. It works amazing, it just takes a little bit longer, and I will link that here so you can check that out if you do not have a domino. Another joinery method that would work is pocket holes. I know some people say that pocket holes are have no place in certain types of woodworking, but I feel like if that's what you have to make furniture, then you should definitely do it. I started with pocket holes and worked my way all the way to where I am now, so don't be afraid to try some things, especially if it's for yourself. I, I like to try things out that I'm going to be keeping methods people say that shouldn't work, and then I keep it and see if it does work in my climate. So don't be afraid to try new things. Now that I have both sets of legs dry fit and labeled so I know that they are good to go, I'm going to rip the pieces that will connect both of the legs together to make it a base assembly that the storage compartment will actually sit on. I don't have a stop long enough to make these cuts, so I just clamp them together, cut them on one side, and then flipped it over and cut it on the other. Now I'm going to be using this attachment on the domino, so that way I can get my mortises cut evenly on all four sides there. That way I don't have to worry about which one might line up with which. So I just label top so I know that these are the tops of both of them, make my cuts. And then one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to readjust the depth for the next cuts on the legs because I want the base cabinet to sit a little bit lower. I don't want it to sit flush with the table base. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll show you here in a second. Also having it labeled top and inside so I know where to make my plunges with the domino. And then I'm also going to just line up the edge of my domino with the edge of these pieces. So again, I don't have to worry about which piece goes with which. So if you've used the domino and things like that and you mark a line and then you're following the line, you understand this process. So all of my cuts are exactly the same on all pieces so they can interchange. The only thing I need to pay attention to is which is the top on these cross pieces. You can see right there, that's the adjustment that I made so that the storage cabinet will just sit a little bit lower. The next part here is going to be rounding over the outside edges on the legs, and I'm doing this before I do the glue up, and then I will round everything else after it is glued together. Another little tip that I wish I would have done that I saw after I built all this is don't hesitate to glue your dominoes into some of your pieces before the glue up. So if I were to redo this, I would probably glue those dominoes into the cross pieces, 
and then just not have any extra squeeze out but just have those glued into each cross piece and that would save me gluing the inside of those each time and I only have to worry about gluing the domino into the legs themselves. Something to think about and something that I'm definitely going to be doing in the future and would have helped in a lot of different ways on this build. Anything you can do to make sure that your glue ups are more seamless is definitely important. Then I set those in the clamps and let them sit overnight. Now that I have everything glued up, I'm going to head back over to my little DIY router table here and start rounding over all of the edges. So the only section of this that I'm not gonna be rounding over is that part on the little inside of the box, I guess you'd say, that little inside section. I'm not rounding over that part because that will be sitting flush against something that is flat and I want that to look, look seamless. The next thing I'm doing here is I'm sanding the legs from 120 all the way up to 180 and I'm going to be staining those with Rubio Monocoat. I did not show the staining process of the legs so I apologize for that but it is the same as doing the tabletop and I do show that and there are also quite a few videos on using Rubio Monocoat. I have a one myself so I will link that here. If you've ever rounded over a 90 degree corner you know that it doesn't perfectly go. So I used this rolled up piece of sandpaper and then just shaped it myself so it looked really nice. Once sanding is all completed, all the way up to 180 on everything, I'm going to wipe it down with mineral spirits. Depending on where you live and the temperature, it might dry faster, but mine took about a day to dry. Now that we have both legs completed and the pieces that will attach it, we're going to move on to the storage compartment of the coffee table. I'm making this out of 1316 straight line red oak. If you don't know what that means, basically it's four quarter rough red oak that's been milled down to 13 sixteenths of an inch, so just over three quarters of an inch, and it has one clean edge. So you don't have to do any milling, you don't have to do anything, you just need to cut it down to the size that you want to get rid of that one rough edge. Then another issue I had here with not having a stop on my table saw long enough for these pieces to get a nice clean edge. I had to get one clean edge, measure, and then sneak up on that line. And I had to do that twice to make sure that I got both of these pieces perfectly the same length. Took a little bit of time. I didn't show that, but basically I had to make quite a few cuts to get them perfect. But on the shorter ones, I was able to set up my miter gauge, set up that stop and get my cuts perfect in one pass. Now to join and make the box, I'm going to be using the domino again. And on the domino, there are these little tabs. I'm using those tabs as my point of reference. So that way I will get all my dominoes in the exact same place on all of my pieces. So you'll see here, I set it then, slide it over till it hits that tab, and then plunge my domino. I do that on the top as well for these pieces. Slide it, hits that tab plunges down, I get all of my dominoes in the exact same place. You'll see here when I fit it, how perfect and flush it is. So I did that for all of my sides. Once I had that done, I'm going to add a half inch dado for the plywood bottom to sit in. Uh, I'm using a flat tooth grind blade here to make all of these cuts, but it's not necessary since you'll never see this dado. It's just because I had this blade, it's a full curve blade, so took a couple less passes than if it was not a full kerf blade. And I apologize for this. I didn't show the dry assembly and I kind of just jumped into a spot where I'm fitting the lift hardware. So you'll see when I glue it up how everything goes together. But right here, I just jumped ahead and I'm putting the lift hardware in. I'm cutting some spacers so that way I can have the hardware centered perfectly in the compartment, labeling them so I don't throw them away because they look just like scrap pieces but I set those in place, slide those over, and perfectly centered. Another thing that I did not show, I apologize for, is these little cross pieces that I'm going to set the lift hardware on. This is also kind of an unnecessary thing. I realized after the fact, I used dominoes to hold these in place and added screws underneath through the plywood, so you could definitely just add the screws through the plywood. Once I have all of these pieces sanded up to 180 like everything else, I hit it with mineral spirits 
then I start the assembly because uh, this is gonna have to dry overnight, so this will dry with the mineral spirits. Another thing like I talked about earlier, I really wish I would have done is pre-glued all of these dominoes into the cross pieces, not the ones I'm currently gluing them into. This would have saved me time. This glue up was a little bit stressful. I don't live in a hot climate, so my glue doesn't dry super fast, but I'm not using a long open time glue either. So it just gets a little stressful and anything that you can do to make your glue ups easier, I know I already said that, you should definitely do. So that's something that I'm going to be doing going forward anytime I have bigger glue ups or multi-section glue ups. I'm gonna be gluing my dominoes in beforehand so that way those are all set and ready to go. Basically have to glue half the amount of dominoes during a glue up. I am using half inch plywood so I am applying glue into the dados. If you are using a solid wood panel you will not want to have glue on those dados and on that piece because you're going to want to allow for wood movement. Plywood is stable so I'm gluing that all together during the assembly. And like I had mentioned earlier, these little cross pieces that the lift hardware are going to sit on, it was probably unnecessary to add those to this glue up. It just gave me more work to do during the glue up process. You can definitely just add screws to those from the underside, like you're seeing me do here. Just countersinking three screws and then putting those in to make sure that that doesn't lift away when the lift hardware is attached. Now that we have the legs glued together and the storage compartment glued together, sanded and ready for stain, we're gonna move on to building the tabletop. I'm using five quarter red oak. These boards are a little bit too wide for my jointer, so I'm gonna use my track saw to cut them down to just under eight inches. I recently got a Grizzly eight inch helical head jointer, and it is amazing. I very rarely have to rip my boards down anymore to get them to fit through. When I had a six inch joiner, I was constantly ripping material down and wasting material just to get it to fit through my jointer. Now I can face join, no problem, edge join. Once I have both of those completed, I come over here to my planer. Then I send all my boards through the planer till they are all the same thickness. Once completed there, I go over to the table saw, rip off that last rough edge that I have on all of my boards to get them to the same width. Once we are done at the table saw, we are going to lay out all of our boards and make sure our grain orientation is alternating, as you can see there. Then I will be writing I-O-I-O -I -O on all of my joints. This is the in and out method. So the edge that you are jointing, if that has the I on it, you put that face inside against the fence and you run it through your jointer. If it has the O, you put that face outside away from the fence. This method ensures that you get the cleanest glue line every single time during your glue ups. Now that I have everything ready to be glued together, I'm going to add some dominoes for alignment. You don't need to use the domino for this. If you have a biscuit joiner, that works great. Or you could even make some calls out of some scrap pieces of wood, run those across the tops and bottoms of your boards once you have them glued together, pinch them with clamps, and that will help make sure that your tabletop is dead flat. Another thing that I've heard is finding out if someone around you has a wide belt sander that they rent out or a cabinet shop that rents out their wide belt sander by the hour. That's a great way to save some time on your glue up process and also saves a lot of time sanding and you get a dead flat panel every time those wide belt sanders are amazing. I had one little knot hole that I needed to fill so I'm mixing a little bit of epoxy. If you've ever mixed epoxy before, I definitely recommend that you use a postage scale or a food scale. This gets your one to one ratio mixed perfectly every time. Then I fill my knot hole, wait a little bit, pop the air bubbles as needed, and you're done. Now that the panel is all glued up, I'm going to start cutting it down to its final dimension. I start by cutting one side, getting that clean square edge, and then I use that cut side as my point of reference when measuring to the final length. Take my track saw again, make a few passes, Usually take about two to three passes, that way you have less burn marks. If you try to go in one, it could pinch and bind. Then I set my table saw fence to the final width that I want and just run it through. Now I'm gonna be adding a one inch radius to all four corners of the table. I'm using the blue tape method with some Starbond CA glue to adhere this template. 
I don't believe these are how they're supposed to be used, but this is all I had and it worked great for me. So just be careful when you're doing this and making sure that you can really get that to adhere there. Then I removed the template, cut the remainder off with a pull saw because I don't want any blowout. Hit it again with the flush trim bit, sand down to get all the burn marks off. Once I have all my radius, my radii, radiuses cut, I'm going to round over the entire tabletop with a 3 8 inch round over. I've just been really obsessed with round overs and rounded corners lately, so I absolutely love how this tabletop came out. Now we're going to be adding some C-channel to this tabletop to ensure that it stays dead flat for a very, very, very long time, probably forever. The C-channel that I'm using is from Bidwell and Iron. I am an affiliate of theirs, so I will link that below if you'd like to check them out. Use Gerber10 at checkout for 10% off. I do have a separate video going over the C-channel installation. I will link that here. That covers making this jig and the spacers and the bits I'm using on my router, showing you how to do all of that. So please check that out. And like I said, it is linked here and it will be linked in the description with everything that I'm using. Whenever you're doing something like this with the router, just make sure you're going nice and slow because you've gotten this far, you have your tabletop basically done, and the last thing you want is for your router to jump or kick and then take a huge gash out of the tabletop that you just spent so many hours working on, and now you have to figure out how to fix that. Now that I have the C-channel in place, I'm going to be adding the threaded inserts. I also got these from Bidwell and Iron. They're the Rampa threaded inserts. If you have a tip or trick for installing threaded inserts, I would love to hear it because these Allen wrenches that I have are absolutely terrible and I got one of those threaded insert tools to put them in and I stripped that out and broke it. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but any tips and tricks would be very helpful. Now we're getting down to the end here and we're gonna be sanding the tabletop up to 180, just like I did everything else. Sanding, water popping, sanding, water popping. Once that is all done, we will hit it with mineral spirits, let it sit overnight till it dries. Then we'll be adding Rubio Monocoat's Castle Brown to this red oak, I think it looked pretty awesome. I have a separate video, so I will link that here below so you can watch it and see exactly how I applied this and all the steps that you need to take to ensure a great finish. And once you're done applying stain to one side, make sure you flip it over immediately and add your finish to the other side. And that also goes for when you're water popping, mineral spirits, anything like that. Anytime you add liquid to one side, you should always add it to the other side to help avoid any cupping or warping. Once you've finished applying your stain, you're gonna to wanna to use a dry, clean rag to wipe away all of the excess until your rag comes away clean. Now that we have all of our pieces stained and finished, we are going to do the rest of the assembly. So we're going to attach both of those legs to the stretcher pieces, gluing those with dominoes. Again, another opportunity that I could have glued those dominoes in beforehand and I did not. Once I have those all in place, I'm gonna clamp them and use some rags to make sure that I don't dent or scuff the finish. Then I'm going to add the storage compartment to the legs themselves. Another thing that I failed to show you, you can see kind of in all four corners there, I just added screws to hold the box to the legs. I'm using a three quarter inch spacer there to make sure that the lift hardware can collapse all the way into the cabinet. And I know I didn't show it, but I added more than two screws to the bottom of the lift hardware. And now that we have that all attached into the cabinet itself or the storage compartment, whatever, I've called it a few different things, so I'm sorry. Then I'm going to attach the tabletop to the lift hardware. So I'm gonna have a hard time explaining how I got this, but I'm gonna do my best. So I took the tabletop, set it on top of the table without the lift hardware. I measured around the entire table and got how much overhang I wanted on the fronts and on the sides. Once I had that number, I took the tabletop off, measured from all sides of the lift hardware in the closed position, once I had that number, I added the overhang that I wanted, and that's how I figured out how much space to have on all sides when the tabletop was in the out position. So please let me know in the comments if that made sense. I would love to get your feedback on that. 
And now we're basically done. So all I did now was added these rubber bumpers on all four edges of the table. So that way when you close it, it has a nice soft feel to it. As you can see here, very nice functioning lift hardware. I got this from Rockler. I will link that down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've made it this far, I absolutely appreciate you so much. 19, almost 20 minutes in, so thank you. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. I would love to hear your thoughts on the build, the design, everything. So please like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.